Hey, I'm Emma Garlett, and on today's episode of Paint It Black, I'll be talking about youth crime. I'll give you a hint. It's not bad kids doing bad things. A lot of you have asked me to cover the crime happening in Alice Springs at the moment. In this episode, I'll be taking a look at that, plus why current interventions aren't working. I'll also look into the crime crisis in WA, which hasn't got as much attention. Now, join me as I paint it black. If you've been watching the news over the last couple of weeks, you've probably seen pictures like this show up on your screen. News story after news story of the youth crime crisis taking over Alice Springs. It seems to have come out of nowhere, but there were a lot of warning signs that went unheard. So let's unpack them. This week, more than 3,000 people turned out to a community meeting in Alice Springs to try and address the issues at play. And this week, a report into the issues in Alice Springs was handed to the federal government. It seems there are two factors at play here. The first point, in July last year, the Stronger Futures legislation, a 10-year, $3.4 billion commitment by the federal government, enacted in 2012, expired. And it seems without a backup plan. The second point, and it's something we hear all over the country, kids have nowhere to go or anything to do to stimulate their minds, especially at night. Whether that's because it's too dangerous to be at home, they're neglected or have nothing to do. But back to the first point, the Stronger Futures legislation. This was put into place in 2012 to tackle alcohol abuse, ensuring children go to school every day and making sure parents play their part. Alcohol restrictions were part of the legislation. And this was following a report in 2007 called the Little Children a Sacred Report, which documented cases of Aboriginal child abuse and neglect. That's when alcohol bans and restrictions were first introduced in Alice Springs. The Stronger Futures legislation expired and restrictions and legislation was lifted without a lot of fanfare. It seemed to happen under the radar, except two senators who at the time, that six months ago, warned of what was likely to happen, but their voices went unheard. To put this in perspective, alcohol had been banned in Alice Springs for 15 years. Then virtually overnight, alcohol was available to anyone over the age of 18. And looking at the Northern Territory police crime statistics in the past year, from January 2021 to November 2022, crime overall has increased, with property damage up 60%. To the second point, kids, some as young as 10 roaming the streets at night. Some kids don't want to go home, some kids can't go home for fear, and there's simply nowhere for them to go or nothing for them to do. This also isn't new to regional and remote towns in Australia. Now, I'm not condoning violence or destruction of any kind, but we need to look at the cause instead of the continuous loop we're in now of punishing, locking up, and releasing without intervention to address the underlying problems. And because it's not something unique to Alice Springs, we know the current interventions aren't working. But even as Alice Springs is in the news right now, a WA town has been experiencing 10-year high crime rates since December last year. Carnarvon, in WA's Gascoigne region, has been experiencing alcohol fueled and youth crime, including burglaries, car damage, and rocks fired from homemade slingshots. In the year between 2021 and 2022, there were almost 2,000 offences recorded in Carnarvon. Burglaries were up 35% than the last peak, which was two years ago. Non-family violence incidents have doubled since 2019, and the number of stolen vehicles was up 47% since last year. This has all happened as Carnarvon's population has been shrinking over the last 10 years. And the situation is so serious, the state government will introduce a new youth justice program next year. But despite calls from the locals, including the Shire president, to get Prime Minister Anthony Albanese to visit the town while he was in WA this week, he didn't. However, he did visit Alice Springs following the pressure from the opposition. There were mixed reactions to his presence in the town, but overall it was a sense of gratitude for highlighting the town. Then Northern Territory's Chief Minister, Natasha Files announced a wave of restrictions, saying the town needed respite from alcohol-related harm. We did that to provide the community and our police and our frontline services with a break, and that has achieved that, but we know that's not a long-term solution. What I do is support the announcement that's been made today, but I also uh, want for communities to be consulted appropriately. The Northern Territory is now under a three-month trial of new takeaway alcohol restrictions. 
which include only buying takeaway alcohol from Wednesday to Friday, 3pm to 7pm. On Saturday and public holidays, except Christmas Day and Good Friday, 11am to 8pm. On Sunday from pubs with drive through bottle shops and clubs for members only from 12 noon to 9pm. And on top of that, you can't buy takeaway alcohol on Mondays and Tuesdays. You can only buy alcohol once a day. Meanwhile, the opposition said... If the level of violence, of crime, of sexual assault, of domestic and family violence was occurring in Brisbane or in Melbourne or in Hobart or in Sydney, there would be outrage. And the premiers in those states would be calling for additional resources from their police departments to go in and restore law and order. So do I think the Australian Federal Police should go up? Absolutely. But that actually already happened in 2007 when the Howard government rolled in the Army and the AFP into town following the Little Children of Sacred report. They were called in without community consultation and the government at the time even suspended the Racial Discrimination Act to do it. But even today, opposition leader Peter Dutton has suggested looking into assessing the homes where these children live to take them away if deemed dangerous. Taking away children is not the right approach. There needs to be a community-led approach. And we know this approach of taking kids away doesn't work. And we know why. These households aren't safe. And it started with removing legislation without a plan to ease the town out of the legislation. The PM has called for a community-led approach because from previous experience all over the country, blanket alcohol bans simply aggravate tensions in the town. Let's look at some other approaches other towns have tried over the years. Using the examples of Kalgoorlie and Port and South Headland. Kalgoorlie has run a police and community youth centre for several years with significant upgrades in 2018, which included a night clinic to allow kids to play sport, sleep or hang out in a safe space. In 2017, Port and South Headland were also making the news for similar reasons to why Alice Springs is now. And in 2020, local police tried a new strategy which involved texting local liquor stores a daily list of vehicles and people banned from buying alcohol. That year, local police said alcohol fueled violence in the town as well as a remote Pilbara region reduced. So what now? Looking broadly, what should the government and police be doing to help people in communities? We should be listening to the solutions which come from the community and the community leaders themselves. Only they know the issues they face and how to solve them. Thanks for watching Paint It Black with me, Emma Garlett. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode.